Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at Deep in Linux, probably one of the prettiest Linux distros that I've seen. So let's get started. As far as my main desktop, because of Adobe products and some other applications, I'm kind of forced to use Windows. If it wasn't for that, I'll be using Linux as a daily driver. Now, that doesn't mean that my laptop, my travel laptop, is not Linux based. Now, I have a Lenovo ThinkPad or IdeaPad Helix, uh, which is a touchscreen and it's got two pieces to it where you could take apart the keyboard and the desktop screen. It does have enormous amount of battery, that's why I like this guy, and it's small, the 13 inch screen at 1080 resolution. That's the problem though. Now I'm using elementary OS on this, which is a really pretty desktop. On top of that, it's very lightweight, so it works really fast for this guy. The only problem with it is it does not have scaling factors. And that's a huge problem, especially for a screen this small, where if you have like a two feet distance, you barely could read the text that's on the screen. And that's a problem for me if I'm trying to read articles and stuff. And I don't really like to detach it from the keyboard and bring it up close. So I needed to find a different operating system. Now I've been using elementary OS for the past year and it's been great. Uh, it's based on Debian. It has all the stuff that you are familiar with, AppGet and stuff like that on Raspberry Pi. Like I said, the only downside is that scaling. I did try a couple of techniques where you could change the scaling, but sometimes the text gets blurred or it doesn't work with certain applications. So here comes Deep in Linux. Now I've heard about this and I've seen it back around December of last year, 2017. And it's something that I did wanted to play with, but I did have to do my due diligence and do some research because it is a China based operating system and you know them and their censorship. So it's one of the things that I needed to clarify to make sure that it was safe for me to use and I wasn't gonna be worried about any of that stuff. Now they did have this little thing on their shop where it does, you wouldn't say leak, but it does gather some anonymous information, but not private information. And it sends it over to China, but other than that, um, I mean, everything else is safe on the operating system and they, they pride themselves on it as far as being safe. To download it, you can head over to deepin.com and they will have a, a download link. Now I had to torrent it because their website took forever for me to download. It said two days or something. So I just went over to, I think Linux distros or distro Linux. I forgot what the link, I'll leave a link in the description below for it. It, they have the ISO image, that is safe. I actually ran it on my VM real quick just to make sure that the ISO is good. This will be my, uh, you could say first impression on using this operating system. So let's get installing. All right, so the first thing we're gonna be doing is uh, selecting the language, which is gonna be English, next, uh, username, okay. Which is gonna be my name, my password, uh, it probably doesn't have internet yet, so it doesn't know what, where I am. So I'm going to select New York. Next. Uh, I used to have the elementary, like I said, so I'm just going to... Uh, I could keep this because this is a swap disk and it's going to create it anyway. And it's 8 gigs, which is exactly the same. Continue, data will be lost. So I'm going to go get a coffee and see how long this takes. Nope, still sipping my coffee and it's finally done installing. So that was actually pretty quick. Okay, so here we have our launcher. It's got pre-installed Steam. It's got WPS, um, where it's, they look exactly like Excel. The only downside with WPS is that it doesn't support macros unless you pay for their licensing. Uh, Skype is installed, Steam, uh, Spotify, Chrome, Deep clone. Okay, so Deepin, a lot of their stuff is built from the ground up by themselves. Um, so the UI and all that stuff is built up from the ground up. So you're not gonna find anything like it. A lot of people compare this to KDE, which is very similar. They do have the arrow look. Um, I do like the menu sometimes like this, especially for a touch screen and touch does work right off the bat. But you could, I think, adjust this because I see screenshots and oh, there you go. See, I like this menu better and I can search what I need to for an app. So if I go over here, it has internet. Okay, so it categorizes everything that you need. So let's take a look at their shop, um, Deep in Store. That's one of the big things about this whole app is their store. Oh, I do need internet, so let's connect to that. Okay, there you go, got the internet working. Let's take a look at their store. I love their loading icon. A lot of their stuff is this little icon over here. It's pretty cool. 
does have a lot of stuff in here. Stuff that you don't normally find, um, according to what I've been reading. So let's go into internet. One of the biggest things that this operating system has that no other operating system, or at least I've seen have, is that it comes actually pre-installed. Uh, let me make this big and I'll show you. It comes pre-installed with a crossover. So if you guys are familiar, Crossover is like play on Linux, it's like Wine, it, it basically allows you to run Windows applications on Linux. And this is one of the biggest features that I enjoy using because it's already pre-built in here. So if I wanted to install something through from Windows, I could. I'll show you in a second about that. But in the meantime, they actually have, oh, they have Vivaldi, they have Firefox, so let's install that and see how that works. And I'm guessing it's gonna notify me when it's done. I'm gonna minimize this. Okay, minimize has a minimized effect, but it doesn't have that genie effect you would find on uh, Mac OS. Okay, so once you hit that, it will just automatically go to shutdown. How do I know? Because I have two batteries on here, so I don't know if it's gonna, oops. Uh, tell me my two batteries. It tells me it's 70%, but I don't know what battery that's on. So I might have to look into that for this, desktop another thing that I really wanted which I am gonna try right now uh, while I'm waiting for that to install which is gonna be the scaling display scaling okay I do have to reboot just to get that going let's go back to this it has accounts so my account is all this set up you could change themes to the dark or the light theme you could change the cursor I do like their default cursor uh, you can change icon themes that has pre-built in. That's pretty cool. Uh, wireless network card, wireless enabled, VPN, proxy, DSL, Bluetooth is working. Uh, audio, left and right balance for the audio. Micro, oh look at that. Um, my microphone input, it's already uh, tracking it. So if I do that, it must be like maxed out. Okay, cool. Sound effects. Oh, if I keep scrolling, I got the clock and power management okay so it does work with you know um probably laptops it will work pretty good with right now my fan's not spinning up so uh that's pretty good mouse and touchpad uh natural scrolling i don't like this natural scrolling so i'm gonna disable it there you go uh i7 366u 2 gigahertz 4 core 8 gigs of ram oh this is really good Okay, so is Firefox installing? It's still installing. It's probably trying to update everything, you could say, like sudo app get update. So that might be one of the things. While that's happening, I'm just gonna browse through all the other stuff. Yeah, terminal. Okay, this looks pretty clean. Oh, so because they don't have the menu bar anymore, they have these three lines, and that's how you get all your menus. I can switch stream right through there. Uh, let's see what it's trying to do. So can I, oh, this volume control. Okay, so if I was to um, system monitor, I could see what's going on. Um, it's not really doing any upload or download. I have no idea what it's doing right now. Um, all right, let's get, jump over to crossover and see what we could do here. Uh, it's very responsive, I could tell you that. Let's go to install Windows software. Okay, it's downloading. I can see the upload and download over here. Uh, for best results, let's do update now. I like this. I really do like this. This operating system is very clean. Now I could like kind of show it off if I'm out and about with this uh, laptop. Okay, there, it's installed. Let's do something simple. Let's do a notepad plus plus mm, runs great I'm gonna hit continue install okay needs my password it's gonna need 533 megabytes because this is the first time it's installing all the prerequisites next time it'll probably take a lot less space but it downloads everything for you 
also downloads the Notepad++. That's what Crossover usually does. It downloads all where the executables are. I mean, I can't complain. It's a very clean system. Yeah, you have the multiple desktops, virtual desktops, so you can swap it around. If I want to add one, oh, and create a new one. Take this out. So it starts off with four, which is normal for Linux. Even in that mode, it was still able to capture everything. What's this? Show desktop, so that minimizes everything. File manager. Let's see how that file manager looks like. Oh, it's very clean. It, it, it's got a Mac feel to the file manager. It's definitely got a Mac feel. Computers on LAN. Oh, it sees all my shares. Uh, I'm not going to show you the video player or the picture viewer. That's pretty self-explanatory. But other than that, as far as just the first feel, uh, first impressions, I really like it. I really do. It's very clean. I have so many things going on and it's not, it doesn't even feel like it's slow. Um, I'm waiting for this notepad to finish. It does take some time. All right, so here, notepad finally got through. Um, oh, cool. If I move it around, it would hide all the windows. Uh, next, next, I agree. Next, next. I'm not even gonna read any. Next. Let's let that install and see how it runs. And there we have it. This is a Windows program called Notepad++ and it works pretty, it works. Oh cool, this Steam also has, look at that. It has transparency on the window. Let's close this because they have something called the bottle. Oh yeah, here you go, the bottles. You could just open your Notepad++ through there. Everything seems very clean. Like the install wise, everything seems very clean. I don't know, I would definitely check it out. It's an it's a operating system that, that works. It's got a Mac feel to it. Uh, it's got the terminal where you could still do a uh, sudo app get update like that and app get would still work. Um, I, I like it so far. Like I said, it's my first impression. I'm gonna be using it for a couple of weeks. Maybe a seven out of 10 because I haven't really uh, spent much time on it. But as far as the appeal, utilities, everything seems very clean. I haven't found any bugs with it. Uh, it's a, it was a little bit slow on crossover. I didn't know why yet, but everything just seems to work. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Again, I rate this system probably a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, there's so many operating systems out there and everyone has its own flavor. And I kind of play around with a lot of them just to see what's new and what I like about each one. So if you guys like this uh, series, you could say, hit up in the comments below and I can make more. Uh, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my Nerd Cave, heck till it hurts.